All right, Samori Benjamin here with Philadelphia Phillies pitcher Michael Lorenzen. Michael, thank you for joining us, man. Now, you're from California, right? Yeah. Which part of California? Southern California, from Anaheim. Oh, Anaheim, okay. So did you grow up an Angels fan? Yeah. Okay, you did. Okay, so uh, what are some of your like best memories of the Angels fan being a kid? Uh, well, they won the World Series in 02. Yes. Uh, and that whole team was a bunch of just good baseball players. Eck Steiner, yeah. Stad, Spezio, yeah. Ken, like I know. Yes. I know all the guys, and yes. um, it was pretty special. So um, I was, I forget how old, maybe 10 years old at the time. And so when a team that you're a fan of wins World Series and you're 10 years old, yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, I know that had to definitely be huge for you. Uh, I remember that series because I'm from New York. I grew up a Yankees fan, so oh, okay. I remember that. And uh, that definitely, yeah, the first round, they beat the Yankees. Yeah. And that World Series, Barry Bonds. So that had to be fun for you to watch Barry Bonds yeah, and yeah, that yeah. And, and all that. And uh, that's really cool, man. Yeah, the Angels had a lot of really good teams. And now you are a really good athlete. I'm sure you probably played other sports. Did you play other sports? Um, not really um, organized sports. Um, I skateboarded a lot growing up. And then I just played a lot of, like, pickup football in the street and, and stuff like that, basketball, but um, I think I played football my freshman year and that was it. And then um, high school basketball my junior year just to kind of condition and have some fun. But I, I never really took it seriously because I just felt like baseball was, was my sport. Yeah, and what was it like just playing in you know, youth leagues, high school in yeah. Anaheim, Kelly, California, and uh, how did you just gain your love for baseball? Yeah, there was a lot of um, baseball to be played because of the weather in SoCal, so we were playing every weekend. And um, I, for, I gained my love for baseball was I grew up in a baseball family. So my oldest brother was drafted out of high school by the Dodgers uh, back in 2000, so I was eight years old right. at the time. So from the, I had scouts coming to my house interviewing him when, he was, you know, eight, when I was eight years old. So ever since then, you see like the Dodgers and the Angels and the all these teams, the Yankees in your house, and you're like, whoa, this is like, so it made me feel like the dream was possible. No doubt. Now, I know that 2010 at a high school, you got drafted first by Tampa Bay, and you passed that up, and you decided to go to Cal State Fullerton yeah. for baseball, right? So a lot of a lot of major league players have gone through Cal State Fullerton. Yes, uh, what was your process like deciding to go there? Um, yeah, we just, it, it was tough. So I was drafted out of high school. Um, as a center fielder and ended up not signing, had a good offer, ended up not signing and going to college and um, had a good career at Cal State Fullerton. They asked me to start closing my sophomore year too. And um, I, I did not want to pitch at all. I hated pitching. Um, and so when I was drafted as a pitcher out of college, it was, it was strange for me, but uh, it's, it's been a good journey. It's been a fun journey. And you know, God, God has his ways to get you where, where you need to be. So it's been fun. Right, so in college, you were mostly an outfielder. Yeah. And then at some point, they had you be the closer. Yeah. And, and the major league team saw that, and they were like, you know what, we like the way you put it so much, we're going to draft him as a pitcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, I mean, how did you process that where, you like you just said, you did not want to yeah. be a pitcher, but you get drafted to the majors as a pitcher? Yeah, it was it was tough because my, <laughs> my dream was to be a major league center fielder. So um, um, I always wanted to be a major league center fielder, and, and you know, when it, yeah, I guess it just, I had to go with what my best opportunity was, and at the time the Reds um, uh, were giving me an opportunity to pitch, and so I was, was great. Yeah. Right, so you were drafted by the Reds 2015. 13. 2013. Yeah. Tw okay, right, you debuted with 2015. Yeah. So now, was there ever an option, chance for you to play outfield? I'm sure there probably was not, right? I begged them to let me do it. They, <laughs> said, they kept saying no, and then. Um, up until Shohei was the talk yeah. and, and right. him being a two-way guy, so right. and then they kind of gave us some opportunities. Yeah. Right, so I know you had opportunities, so I'm going to get to that in a yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, how was your minor league career? Because minor league, a lot of people stayed there for a long time. You stayed there probably for about two years or less, so yeah. how was that for you? It was good. I mean, I mean, it's as smooth of a minor league career as you want. Like, some guys, you know, you, you know, we have Weston Wilson on this team. He's been in minor leagues for a really long time. He's a really good player. And um, so, <laughs> so, go hands, go hands. So um, it was a, uh, you know, you had you have some guys that have worked their entire career to get to the big leagues. They've spent a long career in the minor leagues, and fortunately, I didn't spend a ton of time in the minor leagues. But it was good, and it was all learning to me. Like it was only, it was my first time really pitching ever. Um, and then I get called up in 15, and it's my second year full-time pitching, and I'm starting against big league hitters right. and, and guys that 
I looked up. I didn't look up to pitchers when I was growing up. I looked up to hitters. Yeah. So now I'm facing all the hitters that I looked up to. Right, right, right. So it's different, you know. My my debut was against you know Ryan Braun. And yes. He was like a, when I was in high school, he was the man. And, I was an outfielder, so I like Brian Braun. Yeah. And then my next game's against Andrew McCutcheon. I'm an outfielder, so I like yeah. McCutch. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it was a def, it was definitely a, a different dynamic because I'm I'm pitching. I'm trying to get my idols out versus you know my idols weren't the pitchers that I'm starting against. I didn't care about the pitchers. My idols were the hitters that I'm trying to get out. So it was tough. That's very interesting, and definitely your story is unique. It must be great, folks, to be that talented athletically. You know, you can do everything. You know, uh, so. That's really cool. I mean, so, yeah, and, and you went through the minor leagues very fast and really you weren't a pitcher. And so what do you think was the key for you to learn, like, get the pitching down in the minor leagues and get through it so fast? Honestly, it's just taking my career in my own hands, really, and, like, not relying on anyone else to try and help me out. Like, of course, I'm going to listen to help. I'm going to try, and, but I'm going to seek it out myself. I'm not going to just hope that I get better. I'm going to go make myself better. Because like I said, I had no idea what I was doing. So of course, you're going to have a lot of voices in your head and you got to try and figure out what's right, what isn't, what works for you, what doesn't. So there was a big adjustment period. And, I mean, I, this is my ninth year in the big leagues and I'm still like, I feel like I'm finally getting like used to like, okay, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is how I need to pitch. And, and it, it takes a long time, I and mean, you got to learn at this level. It, it's going to take a little longer than, than when you yeah. got to learn, you know, when yeah. you're younger. Incredible story. So, yeah, I know. So, you mentioned your major league debut. That was in April, I believe, in yeah. 2015. So, what do you remember just about that day in terms of you're getting uh, your first start? I believe you went five innings that game, yeah. and your family's there. So, what was that like for you? Man, it was awesome. Um, yeah, a dream come true. Um, and I remember, it's a funny story, I remember. Everyone always says, slow it down. It's going to speed up on you. So I really like took that to heart. So I was trying to be slow, slow it down. And I get on the mound, and my pitching coach goes, you got the game starts in like seven minutes. He's like, oh. I'm not paying attention. I'm just trying to keep it slow. Like, you should let me know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, yeah, maybe yeah, speed yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, and so I have rapid fired my whole warm up session before I like literally get the ball, throw a pitch, get the ball, throw a pitch. And by, by the time I got in the dugout, I was. I was toast. And so I think my first pitch, like I was a hard throwing guy. My first pitch was like low 90s because I was just exhausted. And, and usually you make your debut, your velo's up, everything's better, but I was all gassed before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wow, that, that, that's great, that's great. So now you're in Cincinnati, and as you said, you really good hitter, and well, you had, a, you had an injury about 2016, 2017, right? So I've had a couple injuries, nothing like too crazy, so an elbow, shoulder. And then my first game back in 21, I, I uh, was tagging up from third on a play in extra innings where I pitched and played outfield and then got to pinch hit and then was extra runner at second and then I tagged up at third base and ended up tearing um, my semi tendon of so my hand. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, in 2019, I believe you had, well, you've hit several home runs in your career and you were pitching in 2019. It was a game where you hit a home run, you were playing in the field, and you also got to win. And yeah. you became your second player in MLB history. You and Babe Ruth that hit a home run, got to win, and played in the field. And Shohei, you know, for as great as he is, he does not play in the field. So, I mean, but... Yeah, Shohei. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> Shohei, playing in the field, Shohei, on, you know. Uh, so, what was that like, you know, to, I mean, to be out there with the Reds, you're playing outfield at times, you're pitching, you're believing, starting, I mean, and you're hitting home runs, so so how was that all, all for you? It was incredible, man. It, it made the game so simple because, um, you know, when I, I got to start, um, so I'm, get, I'm playing in the outfield, and then I'm um, getting at bats, and so I'm already in, in the game, and I've already been in the game. And then, so Pittsburgh was my favorite game. It was, the, I think, one of our last series. I went to, it was, I think I pitched the seventh and eighth inning, even though I, I started in center field for six. And then I went from center field to the bullpen, warmed up to pitch the seventh, and then the eighth, and then I went back out to the outfield for the ninth. And those innings that I threw that game, because I'd already been in the game, it just felt like, I was just still playing baseball. It wasn't like, you know, the adrenaline wasn't through the roof. My heart rate, it was like, I'm just here playing baseball, you know, and it was, and they were good innings. Like, I felt like, it, for me, it helped me simplify everything um, because I couldn't overdo anything. It was just like, you just play baseball, you just play baseball, and you just let your your body take over, you let your skill take over, and, and your hard work take over, rather than overthinking anything and, and trying to do too much. 
great. And all right, so let me tell you. So I believe in about 20 years, there's going to be several guys who are doing what Shohei's doing because I believe kids now are growing up watching it, and now they believe, they see that it can be done. And I believe that kids are going to grow up in their mind aiming to do both, and you know, Major League teams eventually will okay allow guys to do both at some point. Now with you, my question is, do you think that if you had gotten a chance in the time you came into the majors, like really do both, do you think that you could have been successful as a major leaguer doing both? Um, I think I could have been. I mean, I'm not, it's not going to be Shohei Otani successful, right? But not every pitcher is, you know, Max Scherzer or Clayton Kershaw either. It doesn't right. mean that they're, you can't pitch because you're Max Scherzer or Clayton Kershaw. You have a lot of, you have a huge spectrum of quality pitchers from, you know, a uh, uh, replacement guy to a, to a Clayton Kershaw as type of pitcher. So um, Shohei Otani is the first one, and he is of, like, the best ever. But, yeah, I feel like I would definitely have success, and I think, you know, being a defensive guy, too, adds to that value to where I can also be a replacement. I can play a position. I can, you know, I have speed. I, ha I can put the ball in play. So different stuff, things like that. Um, I think I'd be successful. I think you're totally right. I think there's going to be a lot of people coming up. The studs, the Bryce Harpers of, you know, today, when they're kids now, the Bryce Harpers of today, and as they're growing up, their idol is who? Shohei Otani. Right. And what does he do? Yeah. He does yeah. both. Right. So Bryce Harper, I feel like if he had Shohei Otani when he was a kid, he wouldn't be he wouldn't be satisfied with doing one thing. Right. His th he's like, no, I want to be the best. Because yeah. that's, that's the way Harper's wired. He wants to be the best. And so when you have... There's kids right now that are in that same situation. Like, no, I want to be the best. I don't want to be the best first baseman. I want to be the best left fielder. I want to be the best pitcher and hitter. And yeah, that, that generation's coming. Definitely. I think so. I think so. All right, about three more for you. I uh, really appreciate it. Now, can I talk about your transition from you with the Reds for all these years? They drafted you. You were with them in the minor league throughout your first five, six seasons. Then you end up. We're moving on to Anaheim, and you were a teammate of Shohei Otani last season. When Shohei had his you know, great year and all that. Yeah. So, how did you? How was it for you just in Anaheim the one year last year, and also playing with Otani and Trump? Man, because I'm from Anaheim, so it's a dream come yeah. true. So right, it was right, it right. was incredible. I got to sleep in my own bed. I had all my family coming to my starts. Um, all my friends, like it, it was a great time. The weather's just you can't beat Southern California weather. So. We didn't have one rain out at home or anything like that, so that was incredible. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you're playing with two of the best players in the world, with Shohei, Trout, and then, you know, Randon, he was always a guy for me when he was in D.C. I never, I, he was, a, when guy, people would ask me, who's the toughest guy to get out, I'd always say Anthony Randon. So, like, playing with him, too, um, having him make plays for me at third base and just watching him hit, watching his approach, like, it, 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 was, it was fun to be a part of. We didn't um, live up to certain expectations, but it was still, it was a dream come true to play at home and play with guys like that. Awesome. So now this year, you moved on to Detroit early in the year, mm -hmm. and you make your first All-Star parent. You were in Seattle this year, so how was that for you? It was incredible. It was incredible uh, being around, you know, the certain guys and then also seeing guys I played with in Cincinnati, also an All-Star game. And, um, but yeah, Detroit, Detroit was awesome. It's a great city. It's a great town. You know, great suburbs around there too. Like great for families. So you know, me and my wife actually enjoyed our time a lot in Detroit. Um, and then work it out. Yeah, we we love it, man. They helped me quite a bit, and uh, it's a good young team over there. I think they're gonna be pretty good. Okay, so then after the All Star break, you get traded to Philadelphia, and shortly after that, you pitch a no hitter. And that was amazing. And I'll tell you, I was at the no-hitter last year in the World Series. The combined no-hitter oh, yeah. where they got no-hit against. That was it. I wish that would have been at yours. I've never been at a no-hitter where there's been one guy throwing a no-hitter. So that was awesome watching you on TV. Des, what was that? How was that for you? It was awesome. Um, I was just, I felt like I didn't have the greatest stuff, but I was just letting them letting them put the ball in play and, and they were just hitting the ball two people and I was you know if I get to a three one count it's like all right here's this just put it in place somewhere you know and they hit it at someone and it was I was like man this is going good <laughs> this is going good for me right now. Um, and then just to finish it off it was always a dream of mine to be able to throw a no hitter. I mean ever since I became a pitcher and, and um, 
I would watch guys no hitters, you know, just watch them over and over and over again. Like, okay, hopefully, like, hopefully, all right, it's just that easy. You just got to get, you know, like, but it's not that easy. It's hard to do, obviously, and um, to be able to finish it off, man, I, I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. Two more for you. Yeah. Just, um, okay, now, all right, two more for you. You mentioned that you grew up a fan of hitters, fielders, yeah. and all that, and when you were as a pitcher in the majors, you were now all of a sudden facing guys that you grew up and all that. So, who are some of the guys who you when you first started with Cincinnati? And you were like, oh wow, I'm facing this guy. And like, wow, I can't believe it. hitters. Hitters. Yeah. So Ryan Braun. Um, I think he had a home run for me my rookie year. And then Andrew McCutcheon, he took me deep my rookie year. Uh, Miguel Cabrera, he did not take me deep, but I don't think I got him out. <laughs> uh, but Miguel Cabrera was the guy that, like, he intimidated me. And now playing with him, I see that he's really just doing it on purpose, messing around. And I've told him, like, bro, I used to think that you were serious when you were out there. He's like, you're an idiot. Like, why would you think I was serious? I'm not, I'm never serious. And so I'm like, well, you got me. Like, you, because I think I quick pitched him one time and he, like, stared me down. I was like, oh, uh-oh. <laughs> like, here we go. But, um, playing with him, it was, playing with him this year was awesome. And, um, getting to know his personality. Uh, I love him. And, um, yeah. But I would say those three guys were guys that were like, oh, man. Nice. Okay, now the final question. And who is the most talented player that you've ever played with? It could be in the majors. It could be. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Shohei. Yeah. Shohei. Shohei. And then you also play with Mike Trout. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Yeah. Mike Trout. Trout's. I played with a lot of really good players. Yeah, a lot. Like, but yeah. yeah. I got you, no doubt. Joey Altani, I hear you. Michael Lorenzen, you're a great guy. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Can I do one thing? Yes. So I'm coming out with this. Um, I have this app where I'm putting all of my programs together, all of my lifts, conditioning, arm care stuff, throwing different plyometric drills you can do for throwing the fly balls. So I'm putting it together. It's called Work. Um, what I want it to be is an educational tool for kids who can't afford private lessons, you can't do that. We're putting all this together. And I want to upload two to three pro different programs a month on the app to where if you don't know what to do, um, you need to, you want to learn what to do. It's anywhere from youth to college. I mean, we we have something like good lifts. Um, one of my straight coaches that puts together my lifts, built out the lifting side of things. So even if you're in high school, college, even pro ball, you could do the lifts. Um, I have a guy who is named for Rolf. He put together the conditioning, which if you're not at the age of lifting weights yet, it's all body weight too. So that'll that'll be good for you. And then like I said, we have the throwing side of it and we have some hitting as well. And so I just wanted to, this is like my little gift back to uh, people. Because when I was growing up, I couldn't afford private lessons. My family couldn't afford private lessons. And so, you know, I don't want, you don't need to go spend an arm and a leg on private lessons and stuff like that. So I'm going to put it all together on an app called Work Mode. Um, you can follow the Instagram page on App Work Mode and stuff like that. And we should be releasing it this week. Um, and hope everything goes 